Just let me hear some of that rock and roll music Any old way you choose it Hello, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl and I'll be spinning some rock and 50s records every week here on my channel as well as sharing some cool Coca-Cola collectibles and other neat vintage finds. Stay tuned! Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl back with another great video for you today. In this video, we are talking all about Fostoria. I've got some gorgeous pieces sitting in front of me here, and I can't wait to take a deeper dive into my collection of Fostoria. So just a quick note, if you're not following me on Instagram, you really should. That's vintage underscore and underscore vinyl. I will post the link down below, but please go check out my Instagram because I share the live sale calendar and there is still so many great events happening this week on YouTube from live sales to premieres to live chats just a whole bunch of fun and you don't want to miss out on it. So go check out the calendar and a big thank you to Corey, the thrifted artist, our fellow friend and YouTuber. She makes that calendar, compiles everything that's happening into one handy spot so we can check it out and not get confused about what's going on. So check that out. Support everybody you can, subscribe to their channels, leave a kind comment and just have fun this week in the live sales and live chats. Okay, so let's go ahead and get on with this video. There's so much glass here. I'm sorry, this is going to be enormously long because I love Fostoria and I have quite a bit of it. So Fostoria is what we would call an elegant glass company. It is not your typical run-of-the-mill glass that was given away during the Great Depression or stuffed inside of flower sacks. And there is nothing wrong with that glass. I love all glass. It's beautiful and it's collectible. But Fostoria made better glass. They are in that kind of elite group of different glass companies like Heise, Payton City, Tiffin, the list goes on. And of course, if you follow Scott at the old curiosity shop, he talks about that list all the time of the better, more expensive, well-made glass companies out there. But this is one of the best glass companies, in my opinion. Fostoria just made some gorgeous stuff. And Fostoria was founded in Fostoria, Ohio on December 15th, to be exact, in 1887. And then they moved their whole operation from Fostoria, Ohio to Moundsville, West Virginia in 1891. And of course, uh, Moundsville, West Virginia, or West Virginia, was where a lot of bigger glass companies were, like Payton City. So they moved, and then unfortunately, in 1983, Fostoria did have to close, and all of the molds, or most of the molds, went to Lancaster Colony Company. So that is something to be aware of because some of Fostoria's things were reproduced by Lancaster Colony, and I'll show you those in just a minute. So let's talk about Fostoria's most iconic and famous pattern. This pattern is probably the most successful pattern ever of any glass making run. This is Fostoria's American. It is absolutely beautiful. This one is a clear glass and it is a candy dish with the wonderful pedestal on the bottom and it has this kind of block optic design. Let me show this to you up close so you can see it on camera. But this is just beautiful and Fostoria is well known for the American pattern. It started in 1915 and is still being continued today. So you can still get this. It is absolutely stunning. Now, a big note on Fostoria American. A lot of people get it confused and rightfully so because there's so many other companies that imitated this design. So you have Jeanette made their Cubist pattern, which is very similar to this. And then you also have Whiteall. And I constantly see this on the Fostoria Facebook group I'm in, of people saying, is this Fostoria? And everyone's, no, it's Whiteall. And it's not their fault. It all looks so similar. So this is where a book like this is really, really helpful. And this is Fostoria's First 50 Years by Hazel Marie Weatherman. This book is amazing. It has all the pictures straight from Fostoria's original catalogs and mold designs, and it has everything you need to know. And what's really helpful about this is I'm just going to show you Fostoria American or Americana, as some people say, because this is really where these books are so helpful. 
see, here is my candy dish here. So I was able to identify it and I can see everything about it. But you see these bowls? This is one way to say, okay, that's not white all because white all made their bowls with little toes on the bottom or feet and Fostoria never did. You don't see a single toe on any of the bowls that is shown here for the American pattern. So that is where something like this gives you those extra details to really look and see what exactly they made, what they look like, and kind of be able to distinguish the difference between white all, cubist, and American. So that is something to be on the lookout for when you are shopping for American. It's easy to get confused, but get a book like that and you won't be. Okay, so the next pattern I'm gonna share with you all is something that's really special. My mom found this in a box and I was so excited when she found it because I knew it was Fostoria and it was just gold sitting in the upstairs attic waiting to be discovered. But this is Fostoria's 1930s geometric pattern designed by the famous George Saker. He was one of Fostoria's most famous and iconic designers Everyone's heard of him in the Fostoria world, and this is just gorgeous. This was produced in the 1930s, I believe into the early 40s, and then they stopped production. There wasn't any more of these made, and this is very Art Deco in my opinion. It's just beautiful. This came in several colors. This is the blue, but several other uh, colors include clear and yellow. So you want to be on the lookout for those. But when you type this in on Google, you want to type in Fostoria Geometric George Saker Bowl, and this will come up and you'll be able to find it. Now this is a console bowl, which meant that it probably would have gone on top of a television. And then you would have had two candlesticks to go with it. So it's kind of like a matching pair. And there are two geometric candlesticks in the blue color here. And they're little short candlesticks, which is kind of nice and adds a variety of height compared to the bowl, but very Art Deco in my opinion. And I just think this is just gorgeous. What a find. So I am so lucky to have these. I don't know who they belong to. My grandmother can't be uh, with us right now because of COVID. So I can't really show those to her to help her remember what they look like and figure out who might have had them. But they're gorgeous and I'm grateful to be enjoying them now. So the next piece of Fostoria is one that I think is really unique. It is a cool design that's kind of been reinvented by Fostoria in the late 50s uh, to the 60s. Now, Fostoria made a design called Coin, but Coin is actually not new. Coin was made by the U.S. Glass Company in 1892. But what's interesting about coin is when it was first made, they used real coins from the U.S. Treasury to imprint that design into the glass. Well, the Treasury found out about it and they weren't too happy and they said, oh, this is counterfeit. You can't do that. And they put a whole stop to the operation. So nothing really became of that until the late 50s, early 60s when Fostoria decided Let's make our own version of coin. So they did, and they produced it for Avon. So there's a lot of beautiful coin glass out there, but not all coin glass is the same. Now you have several different generations of Fostoria coin. And I've talked about this on my channel before, but it's really important to know, especially if you're a reseller, you don't want to get coin that may not be as desirable because not all coin is wanted by collectors. And here's what I mean by that. This is first generation acid washed coin. That means that this was a process used to make the frosting on the coins called acid washing. After that, Fostoria switched to sandblasting. Now the reason why they switched to sandblasting is because the U.S. government banned acid washing. So after that they switched to sandblasting and that is called second generation coin. Most collectors are most impressed with first generation coin. The reason being is the coins just look good. They're sharp, they're clear, they're not fuzzy. The acid washing just makes them pop off the glass versus sandblasting, which isn't as good. And then Lancaster Colony Company got the molds and reproduced that in the 70s and 80s. And boy, the Lancaster Colony Company stuff just looks awful. 
the colors aren't right the coins sometimes are so sand plastered off it's like they just let the whole coin become almost not even frosted because they just blasted the heck out of it and then other times it's so off center and so fuzzy you can't even really see what the coin's supposed to be so that's kind of the downfall with the lancaster colony company now Fostoria never reproduced the amber or the olive color. Fostoria, I mean, they produced that, and Lancaster Colony Company never reproduced it. So if you have something you generally know in this color, you will know, of course, that it's not Lancaster Colony Company, and you can be sure of that if it is amber or olive. Now, clear, red, blue, and green were all reproduced. So let me show you the coins up close. Now I have a Lancaster Colony Company piece here, and then I have a Faustoria piece. So I'm gonna show you the difference. This is Faustoria first generation coin. You can see how crisp the coins are. And this has a very American style motif on it. You've got the Liberty Torch, and then you have an Eagle, it says 1887. And you can see on that coin that says 1887, you can see how sharp that is. The coins are evenly frosted. They look very sharp. They're standing out. You can read 1887 well. You can see the eagle. There's nothing wrong with it. It just is really, really nice coin glass. Now, this is a creamer and sugar set. So I just showed you the creamer. Now here's the sugar. It's got a covered lid here with this kind of wonderful little point design and ooh, let's not break all the glass there this is just beautiful and again this is first generation coin this coin was acid washed now let me show you lancaster colony this is a candy dish made by them you can see that the color is this blood red dark color the original fostoria coins in this color will be a beautiful, bright, cherry tomato red. So there's a big difference. They're easy to spot. The blue that Lancaster Colony Company made is like this dark navy. And Faustoria's blue was this beautiful kind of Caribbean ocean blue. So it's just gorgeous. So let me show you the coins up close. Can you see on this coin in particular how it is not perfectly centered, the frosting there. It doesn't go all the way to the edge. Let me see if that's gonna focus for you. And you see how kind of fuzzy and hazy that looks? Now let me hold this up and let me try to hold up coin so you can see it better. But this is an uh, acid washing here on the amber and that is sandblasting done by the Lancaster Colony Company. I hope you guys can see the difference, but it is something you really have to study and look up in person. It's really hard to buy coin online unless you know the colors that you're getting. See, Louie agrees with me. <laughs> unless you know you're getting olive or amber, which was never reproduced. Now, I also have a pair of beautiful candlesticks in clear. This is acid washed first generation coin and what's neat about this is this has the liberty bell and then it has 1887 and it has sort of a early american soldier motif on it so these are really pretty as well and i love the coin design i don't know why i'm attracted to that but i just think it's so neat uh, and i really really love this by faustoria so i have two of these and they are just lovely Okay, so moving right along, the next piece of glass by Faustoria is this gorgeous compote. It is in a yellow color, or most collectors would say topaz, but this is in the June pattern. This is just gorgeous etched depression glass, really delicate, really beautiful. Kind of has a little bit of an optic design to it, but I just love the pattern. Now, one thing with Faustoria's patterns is a lot of them were flower designs. So you have to kind of look specifically at the design to tell the difference. And what stands out from all the other flowers for June is that June has a bow. And you can see that beautiful bow there on the compote, if that will show up. See the ribbon going around the outside? That's how you can tell June apart from, say, chintz or Versailles or any of the other Faustoria patterns. 
So that is Versailles. That's not Versailles. I'm just telling you all kinds of things that don't make any sense. That is June. And yes, it was introduced in 1928 and it was not produced after 1932. So they completely stopped production in 1932. But I love June. Again, one of my favorite Faustoria patterns. Now the next piece is Faustoria crown. And this is not depression glass. This would have been produced from 1950 to 1960. And this was designed kind of after British royalty. And this is definitely a design by none other than George Saker. So this is one of his famous designs and it's beautiful. Now this is the candy dish. Some of them came with just this flat bottom. Others of them came with a pedestal base. They came in blue, they came in red, they came in, I think, clear, and then purple. I think there's purple, but that the purple ones might have been done later on by Lancaster Colony Company, so you have to look into that. But this is crown, and I think it is just a beautiful piece of yellow glass. Absolutely stunning. Really love the design by George Saker. The next piece of Faustoria is one that I am kind of quite proud of because I got it for 43 cents at the Goodwill. I went in last October to buy a jacket for a Halloween costume for my costume party and I didn't find the jacket I was looking for but I came out with this gorgeous bread plate and I knew it was Faustoria and the funny thing is is there's these ladies in there shopping they were resellers and they were just buying up all the glass and they left this behind and the one lady goes oh that's nothing i thought to myself i'm scooping that up that's faustoria so the next piece of glass i'm going to share with you all is in the navarre pattern by faustoria now i shared the big picture i have the tall glass picture that belonged to my grandmother a few videos ago but this is a bread and butter or small little tidbit plate by Faustoria. This was produced in 1937. And there's kind of a funny story to this plate. I think I've shared it before, but I'll share it again. I never find anything at my Goodwill. And last October, I went in the Goodwill to find a Halloween costume, a jacket for a Halloween costume I was doing for my costume party. And I couldn't find the jacket, but I walked out with this gorgeous Faustoria plate. And I was in this aisle with these two ladies who were clearly resellers. I mean, they, they had the carts piled full of stuff. And the one lady goes by this and she goes, oh, that's nothing. I thought to myself, yeah, it is, it's something. It's Faustoria and Navarre, it's like the picture I have. And of course, I got lucky, it was half off day and I got this for 43 cents. I cannot believe 43 cents for this clear, beautifully etched depression glass tidbit or bread plate. I couldn't believe it. It's amazing. So this plate is never going anywhere. It has such a unique story and it's really, really beautiful. Now the next piece of Faustoria I'm going to share with you is kind of a mashup of two Faustoria patterns. This is a mix between Faustoria's Fresno and Greek key. Now Faustoria in their original selling of this dish or a little cup, they would have called it a fruit cup, but we probably call it a sherbet nowadays. But this is just a beautiful glass piece. Now it has the Greek key design on the outside. You can see that there if the camera's gonna cooperate and pick it up. And then on the top and the bottom, that band going around is actually the Fresno pattern. So you have a little bit of a mashup of both in this beautiful fruit cup. It has sort of an optic design to it. And it's just really, really pretty. I am in love with this. Now this would have been produced from 1925 to 1931. So this is just spectacular. And I only have one of these, but I kind of like to mix and match my glass. Uh, I don't collect, I mean, yes, I collect coin. Yes, I collect Navarre. Yes, I love Baroque. 
but I like to kind of spread them out in different areas around my home and I don't mind having one singular piece as opposed to a whole set. And my counter right now, you probably can't see it, but I have a whole row of glass that is all color coordinated and I love when the light shines through it and just lights it up. It's so gorgeous in the morning times. So let's go ahead and check out another piece of Faustoria that I find really beautiful. I got this uh, in an antique store and it actually does glow green. I shared this in my uh, video on uranium glass and this is in the Versailles pattern. And what's unique about this bowl is it has these handles and you do see the handles on Faustoria bowls, but you don't often see them on this Versailles pattern very often. So this was produced from 1928 to 1924. And you can see that, that there, that etching is just so intricate and beautiful. Now this pattern looks a lot like Trojan. So you kind of got to be careful when you're out there looking and identifying glass. And I'll show you this mark here in the etching. It's this, this pattern. It kind of looks like a leaf or a fan. I'm not sure exactly what you would call that. But that right there is really enlarged on the Trojan pattern and you have less of this kind of filigree flower work on the outside. So that is the difference really between Trojan and this beautiful Versailles pattern. But this bowl will fluoresce under black light and it's just absolutely stunning. So the last piece of Faustoria for this video is one of my very favorite Faustoria patterns. I could not be more thrilled to have this special family piece. It sits by my window and the light comes in every day and creates this really cool prism rainbow effect around my room and it is just beautiful. These belonged to Evelyn Nunley who was related to my great grandfather. They sat atop her piano and I am thrilled, as I said, to death to have these. These are in the Baroque pattern and Faustoria made the Baroque pattern from 1936 to 1966, but these candlesticks are almost 100 years old and I only brought the one because I was really afraid of holding both of them at one time. My kind of rule with glass is that I try to hold one individual piece at a time so I don't break something, but this is just beautiful. Uh, this candlestick here has these gorgeous crystals that hang down and then it has the Baroque design. Very uh, fancy uh, to me. Hollywood Regency almost kind of mixed with Victorian. I don't know what would you guys say this period of uh, design is coming from, but I love these candlesticks. They are so special, so beautiful, and one of Faustoria's most elegant uh, designs in my opinion. Now do not get Baroque confused with flame. It's very easy to do it because they both kind of have this, this pattern coming off of it right there with the ball. Uh, but flame is different than Baroque. So it's easy again to get all of these confused and that's where a book really does help. But these are all the Faustoria pieces that I have to share with you all today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you will stay in, stay safe, and Ben's YouTube. That's why I go for that rock and roll music. Any old